Welcome back to Nostalgia Channel. Today, in this heartfelt video, we're here to provide you with the latest updates on the recent passing of some notable individuals. As a trusted news platform, we are committed to honoring and commemorating those who have made a significant impact on our lives and the world around us. If the stories of these extraordinary people resonate with you, we kindly ask for your support and remembrance by liking this video. Thank you for joining us in this moment of reflection and tribute. Susan Buckner, known for her iconic role as the spirited Patty Simcox in Greece, peacefully passed away at the age of 72, surrounded by her loved ones in Miami. Her family announced that she succumbed to natural causes. Born on January 28, 1952, in Seattle, Washington, Susan's journey to stardom began when she was crowned Miss Washington in 1971, securing a top 10 spot in the Miss America pageant the following year. Her charisma and vitality shone brightly as she graced the stage, dancing on the Dean Martin show's Gold Diggers and as part of the musical duo Buckner and Pratt. However, it was her breakout role as Patty Simcox in the 1977 hit musical Grease that catapulted her to fame. Her portrayal of the vivacious cheerleader alongside Olivia Newton-John's Sandy brought joy to millions, contributing to the film's massive success and solidifying her legacy. Beyond Greece, Susan showcased her talents on iconic TV shows like The Love Boat, BJ and the Bear, and The Hardy Boys' Nancy Drew Mysteries. She demonstrated her versatility by starring in the horror film Deadly Blessing and later in Police Academy 6, City Under Siege. Despite her achievements, Susan made the heartfelt decision to step away from the spotlight to focus on raising her family. Those who knew her remember her for her kindness, warmth, and infectious smile. Olivia Newton-John fondly described her as a joy to work with and a lifelong friend, while John Travolta remarked that Susan's energy and spirit were unparalleled. Susan is survived by her son, Adam Josephs, daughter, Samantha Mansfield, grandchildren, Oliver, Riley, Abigail, and Ruby, sister, Linda, daughter-in-law, Noel Josephs, son-in-law, Adam Mansfield, and longtime partner, Al. In lieu of flowers, the family requests donations be made to Miami's Fairchild Tropical Botanic Garden in her honor. Susan Buckner will always be remembered for her dedication to family, her infectious enthusiasm for life, and the radiant joy she brought to all who knew her. Tributes to Susan Buckner. Ian Gelder, the esteemed actor renowned for his unforgettable portrayal of Kevin Lannister in Game of Thrones, has passed away at the age of 74 due to complications from bile duct cancer. Beloved for his contributions to both stage and screen, Gelder leaves behind a legacy that will be cherished by generations to come. Throughout a career spanning over four decades, Gelder captivated audiences with his remarkable performances. From his role as Mr. Decker in Torchwood Children of Earth to numerous other productions, his talent and dedication were unparalleled. His husband, Ben Daniels, expressed profound sorrow and love for Gelder in a heartfelt tribute, describing him as his absolute rock and partner of over 30 years. Their enduring bond served as a testament to Gelder's kindness, generosity, and loving spirit. Beginning his career in the 1970s, Gelder became known for his ability to embody a diverse range of characters, from the enigmatic Mr. Decker to the pragmatic Lord Kevin Lannister. Colleagues praised him for his versatility and ability to bring depth to every role. Actor Toby Hadoki described him as a terrific actor who brought a disquieting, subtle menace to his performances. Gelder's presence graced many productions over the years, including Doctor Who, His Dark Materials, and a stage adaptation of Titus Andronicus at Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. 
his powerful and memorable performances left an indelible mark on audiences worldwide. Online tributes from fans and colleagues poured in, praising Gelder's professionalism, generosity, and unwavering dedication to his craft. His legacy lives on through his impressive body of work and the love and kindness he shared with those around him. Ian Gelder will be remembered as not only a brilliant performer, but also a remarkable human being whose impact transcends the stage and screen. Tributes to Ian Gelder. Rochelle Oliver, who gracefully departed at the age of 86, was not only an esteemed actress, but also a dedicated teacher, leaving an indelible mark on both stage and screen. Renowned for her powerful performances in Lillian Hellman's Toys in the Attic and Edward Albee's Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, she captivated audiences on Broadway and beyond. Her cinematic journey included memorable roles in films like Next Stop, Greenwich Village, Scent of a Woman, and Hollywood Ending. Guided by her mentor, Utah Hagen, a seminal figure at New York's HB studio, Rochelle transitioned seamlessly into a respected acting teacher. Her tenure at HB studio, starting in the 1970s, shaped the lives of countless aspiring actors with her thoughtful guidance and luminous artistry. Rochelle believed in helping her students find their unique voice and insisted on thorough exploration in their craft. Her versatility was evident in notable stage works such as Harold Happily Never After and The Orphan Home Cycle. She left an indelible impression when she assumed the role of Honey in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf after Melinda Dillon, showcasing her talent and dedication. On television, Rochelle portrayed Judge Grace Lynn on Law and Order for a decade, earning respect for her talent across various mediums. Her devotion to teaching was unwavering, with her son, John, sharing that it meant everything to her. Rochelle Oliver's impact extended beyond the stage, serving on HB Studios' transition board after Uta Hagen's passing, ensuring the school's continued growth. Rochelle Oliver will be fondly remembered for her unwavering passion, her dedication to her students, and her profound impact on the world of acting. Tributes to Rochelle Oliver. Gail McKinney Griffith, who gracefully departed at the age of 74 after battling cancer, was a trailblazing dancer and a founding pillar of the revolutionary dance theater of Harlem. As one of the company's pioneering principal dancers and later as its esteemed ballet mistress, Gail played a pivotal role in shaping the organization's early triumphs. Her exceptional talent and unwavering dedication brought strength and grace to the stage captivating audiences worldwide. Despite facing hurdles during her formative years at Juilliard, Gail's indomitable spirit led her to join Arthur Mitchell's visionary troupe in 1968, where she left an indelible mark. Colleagues such as Virginia Johnson lauded Gail as a dancer with a transcendent quality, praising her meticulous technique and musicality. She toured globally with the Dance Theater of Harlem performing for luminaries like Stevie Wonder, Mick Jagger, and Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother. Although her significant contributions may not have been widely recognized in later years, Gail's legacy has been revived through works like The Swans of Harlem, which celebrates her achievements alongside those of her fellow dancers. Beyond her time with the dance theater, Gail's post-stage career saw her coaching for Louis Johnson's choreography in the film The Wiz, starring iconic performers like Diana Ross and Michael Jackson. Gail later continued to inspire as a teacher and performer across Europe, imparting her deep knowledge and passion to the next generation of dancers. Gail McKinney Griffith is survived by her daughter, Kadia T. Griffith, her son, Don Griffith II, and a grandson, Despite the challenges she faced throughout her career, Gail never lost her love for the stage. Before each performance, she would knock on the stage three times for luck, 
a ritual symbolizing a moment of release and empowerment, allowing her to share her extraordinary gift with the world. Bill Holman, who gracefully departed at the age of 96, was not just a musician, but a true legend in the realms of jazz and traditional pop. As a renowned composer, arranger, conductor, saxophonist, and songwriter, he left an indelible mark on the music world, spanning seven remarkable decades. Born on May 21, 1927, in Olive, California, Bill's journey into the world of music began in Orange and Santa Ana, where his passion for music blossomed. Inspired by jazz greats like Count Basie and Duke Ellington, Bill initially pursued a career as a saxophonist before discovering his true calling in arranging and composing. Bill's unique ability to blend counterpoint and dissonance with rhythm made his work instantly recognizable. His collaborations with the likes of Stan Kenton's orchestra and other big band leaders such as Woody Herman and Buddy Rich showcased his innovative spirit and knack for creating timeless jazz compositions. Throughout his illustrious career, Bill's contributions earned him multiple Grammy Awards and accolades, including recognition as a Master Arranger by the NEA Jazz Masters Award. Fellow musicians praised his creativity and collaborative spirit, with Buddy Rich often crediting Bill for reinventing his band's style and introducing new audiences to big band jazz. Even in his later years, Bill's influence continued to resonate in jazz bands and orchestras worldwide. His legacy as a composer and arranger will undoubtedly continue to inspire generations of musicians, ensuring that his remarkable talent and contributions to music will never be forgotten. John Pisano, whose legacy in American jazz guitar is truly legendary, peacefully passed away at the age of 93, leaving behind a profound impact on the music world. Renowned for his distinctive style and remarkable collaborations, Pisano's career spanned over six decades, enriching the jazz landscape as both a solo artist and a sought-after side man. Born on February 6, 1931 in Staten Island, New York, Pisano developed an early passion for jazz guitar and swiftly established himself as a prominent figure in the music scene. His versatility and virtuosity led to memorable partnerships with jazz luminaries such as Herb Alpert, Billy Bean, Chico Hamilton, Peggy Lee, and Joe Pass. Pisano's collaborations with Pass, particularly on albums like Duets and For Django, are revered as some of the finest jazz guitar recordings ever produced. As a leader, Pisano crafted timeless albums like Making It, Guitar Duets with Billy Bean, and Among Friends. His John Pisano's Guitar Night events served as a testament to his commitment to nurturing a community of guitarists, providing a platform for both emerging and established talent. Known for his rhythmic creativity and lush harmonies, Pisano's distinct touch graced numerous studio projects, including iconic albums by Herb Alpert, Peggy Lee, Sergio Mendes, and Joe Pass. His musical brilliance and generous spirit earned him high praise from fellow musicians, with Herb Alpert describing Pisano's playing as impeccable and unparalleled. Beyond the studio, Pisano's live performances with his Flying Pisano's ensemble and his weekly guitar night events left an indelible mark on the jazz guitar community. His legacy lives on through his family, friends, and the countless musicians who were influenced by his artistry. The world of jazz mourns the loss of a true giant in John Pisano. Tributes to John Pisano. Jim Mills, whose untimely passing at the age of 57 from a heart attack has left a void in the world of American music, was a revered figure and a true master of the bluegrass banjo. Known for his mastery of the three-finger picking style pioneered by Earl Scruggs, 
Mills brought a distinctive touch to the instrument, solidifying his place as an influential figure in bluegrass music. Born on December 18, 1966, Mills developed a deep passion for traditional bluegrass from a young age. His talents led him to a remarkable 14-year career with Ricky Skaggs and Kentucky Thunder, during which he earned widespread recognition and garnered six Grammy Awards. Prior to joining Skaggs, Mills spent five years honing his craft with Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver, establishing himself as one of the finest banjo players in the genre. Mills's solo albums, including Bound to Ride, My Dixie Home, and Hided Blues, showcased his soulful playing and profound respect for bluegrass tradition. His remarkable achievements, including six-time IBMA Banjo Player of the Year, set a new standard in the bluegrass world, solidifying his place in the genre's pantheon. Beyond his musical prowess, Mills was a connoisseur of pre-war Gibson banjos, owning several rare models such as the prized Ma Crow and a banjo once owned by the late Snuffy Jenkins. He transitioned from the touring world in 2000 US to focus on his business of buying and selling these rare instruments, sharing his expertise with others through his book Gibson Master Tones, Flathead Five String Banjos of the 1930s and 1940s. Mills' peers admired him for his musicality and generosity, with Ricky Skaggs praising his ability to infuse warmth and life into every note. Jim Mills leaves behind a legacy of timeless recordings and instrumental expertise, inspiring countless musicians to follow in his footsteps. Hootie Ingram, who passed away at the age of 90 in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, has left behind a legacy that resonates deeply in American football history. Renowned for his remarkable career as a player, coach, and athletics administrator, Ingram will be remembered for his significant contributions both on and off the field. Born in Tuscaloosa on September 2, 1933, Ingram's journey began at Tuscaloosa High School before he pursued higher education at the University of Alabama in 1951. There, he quickly made his mark, earning three letters each in football and baseball. Ingram's prowess as a standout defensive back earned him recognition as an All-SEC player in 1952, setting a conference record with 10 interceptions in a single season. His stellar performance extended to the 1953 Orange Bowl, where he played a pivotal role in Alabama's resounding victory. Transitioning to coaching after college, Ingram's defensive acumen caught the attention of many, leading to his appointment as head coach at Clemson University from 1970 to 1972. During his tenure, he introduced the iconic Tiger Paw logo, leaving an indelible mark on the program. Ingram later served as an influential athletics administrator notably as athletic director at Florida State University and his alma mater, the University of Alabama. At Alabama, he played a pivotal role in hiring Gene Stallings, whose leadership led the team to a national championship in 1992. Throughout his illustrious career, Ingram received numerous honors, including induction into the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame in 1991 and the Orange Bowl Hall of Fame in 1999. He was recognized by Alabama as a second-team defensive back on its Team of the Century and was bestowed with the Paul W. Bryant Alumni Athlete Award for his exceptional contributions to society. Those who knew him admired Ingram's unwavering commitment to excellence. Former Alabama coach Gene Stallings described him as a man of character and a true leader who prioritized the well-being of players and university alike. Hootie Ingram leaves behind a storied legacy that continues to inspire athletes and coaches alike. As we wrap up this segment on channel nostalgia, we extend our deepest gratitude to you, our viewers, for joining us in commemorating the lives of those we've discussed today. Their contributions, 
whether in the realm of entertainment, sports, or other fields, have left an indelible mark on our collective memory. As we bid farewell to these remarkable individuals, let us carry forward their legacies with reverence and appreciation. Remember to subscribe to our channel for more updates and tributes, and thank you once again for your support in honoring these extraordinary lives.